Welcome back. All right. I'm sitting in my office and I said to myself, what could I do since uh, to continue this educational lesson? Uh, part of it is allowing you to understand that there's opportunities now before you inherit anything. Uh, when you were younger, and I'm referring to my family and friends, uh, and especially my kids, now that you guys are adults, I think one of the most important things is thinking about you're off on your career. You may not be doing what I'm doing, but I'm legitimately concerned because the goal of it is, is that we can't ignore who is being successful and who is struggling in life. So like always, if you've been around me, you know, I go right into it. The goal of today, just tell you what the reason is, is to open your eyes up to what things mean and how they play a role in affecting you. Let's go. Hit the screen, let's show it, let's jump right into it. That way we got no questions. Okay, here it is. Here's the starting point of understanding. This, this is how it goes. We go back to how to became a millionaire and I walk you through the process of how I learned certain things. Then next we talk about difference between LLC or C Corp. I explain to you. Then we go to your per minute rate. Now that you've watched those three videos, and I suggest you watch it in that order again, I know the videos for you, you may be saying, well, I, I saw it. Okay, how does it play in? Critical thinking. Starting point of understanding. What is your current tax bracket in 2022? Are you married or are you single? This is more for cousins that I haven't spoken to or uncles and aunts that were single the last time we've spoken and they may be married now because it's been two years. Now. 2021, how much of your income were you able to set aside and not consume? In 2020, how much of your income were you able to set aside and not consume? How come that's important? Let's go into it. All the opportunity, anytime you have that's free, whether it's your lunch break, whether it's the 15 minute break, whether it's a day you have off during the week, it's called your opportunity time. What do you need? Well, one, your checking is not your support your savings is not the support for your checking again i repeat your checking does not get support from your savings your savings should never be related to supporting your check control your consumption you should see your savings as opportunity money money that allows you to get into transactions and generate income what income are we referring to let's jump right into it In 20, oops, was that window there? In 2022, right here, federal tax bracket for a single person, especially my kids pay attention, you can make up to $10,275 or less. It's from zero to $10,275, you're gonna pay 10%. If you make from $10,276 to $41,775, you're gonna pay 12%. Now, what is that? Ordinary income. Let's go to this definition. Ordinary income is a type of income that is taxable at ordinary rates. For examples of ordinary income include salaries, tips, bonuses, and commissions, and rent. So that's ordinary income. Again, including rent. That's ordinary income. Now let's get another definition. What is ordinary income? In broad terms, ordinary income is money earned from working. That includes hourly wages, salary tips, commission, interest earned from bonds, income earned from a business, some rent and royalties, short-term capital gains that are um, held for no more than a year, and unqualified dividends. So ordinary income, they all been grouped into it. We got a couple of categories, wages by the hour, by, by the salary, by tip, by commission, interest earned from bonds. That's right. If you buy some government bonds or some junk bonds, which are considered corporate bonds, that is considered ordinary income. What is ordinary income tax rate? Here we go. Here it is, period. So if you are in this tax bracket and you wanna become a millionaire, you wanna become, you wanna understand what's the difference between an LLC and a C Corp, we need to learn a different word today, okay? And that word is this. Dividends are, can be classified either as ordinary or qualified. Whereas ordinary dividends are taxed as ordinary income, qualified dividends that can meet certain requirements are taxed at a lower capital gains rate. So let's jump right into it. What is a lower, a lower capital gain rate? 
But before we do, we need another definition. Okay, nope, we're not gonna use that definition. Here it is, 2022 tax rate if you're single. Now, here you are, you working. I can have two choices. I can actually say, I'm gonna hire you because you're my loved one or my cousin or friend. I'm gonna pay you $40,000. So $40,000 flat, I'm gonna pay you that. When I pay you $40,000, 12% has to be paid to the federal government. There's nothing you can do about that. But what if I told you, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the stock that I have in my company and I'm going to move it over to you through some legal ways of doing that, of course, nothing illegal here, but I'm gonna pay you $40,000 in dividends that you can receive. What is your tax bracket now? Zero. So we now understand that money's made at the entry. If you work a job and you're gonna pay 40,000, you're gonna pay 10%, period, 10%. We take the next step. If you're gonna make over $40,167, you're gonna pay 15%. Well, if you're gonna make over 41, you're gonna pay 22%. Look at that, zero federal tax. See, one of the things that the rich understand is they, under, they realize we recognize and we listen. So it's not an issue. I find it interesting that most people fight for raises every year. And then as soon as they make over $41,775, they say, well, I have to go out and get an IRA because I make $41,776 and my taxes went up 10%. That wasn't the move. Investing in an LLC is definitely not the move. How come? Because qualified dividends don't come from an LLC. It only comes from a C Corp. Now, let me just be very clear. I have no bias. Whether a person chooses an LLC and pay more taxes, that's their choice, or a person uses to be associated with a C Corp and pay less taxes, that's their choice. But I'm telling you how I became a millionaire. And when I became a millionaire, watch that video if you haven't seen it, repeat it, watch it if you have to. Watch the whole thing in entirety so you can get a better understanding. The IRS is telling you that if you want to change your tax bracket, change the way you enter into a transaction. That meant that with that extra money that you have, that you saved, and we're talking about 1,200 in 2020, in 2021, 1,500. So this is a total of 2,700. You need to be associated with a C Corp, how come? Because if you make that money, your goal now is to move from fixed income brackets to lower federal tax brackets. That's not going to get a second job. That's not going to start an LLC. That's going to be associated with a C Corp. That's not my rule. That's the IRS rule. Wealth is an act of obedience. So if you are listening to your father, if you were my friend or my cousin, especially my cousin, you got to understand. You guys are associating yourself with LLCs. The IRS doesn't like that. How come? Because they made a qualified dividend. And that is going to be association is telling you that you have to take your focus and look at a C Corp. What is the reason they tell you to look at a C Corp? They tell you to look at a C Corp because a C Corp meets a stimulus that they already wrote a law for and the IRS is now administering the rules for that law. So you have to accept it. How come? Because we're going to go down here. We're going to look. Hard example. What, when you go to make a raise, is it coming from your savings? Because savings mean income. It doesn't mean support for checking. It doesn't mean if I make a bad choice in consumption, I'm going to pull from my savings. It's not even savings. What you actually have is money that you did not use for consumption that you need to now utilize for income. So saving is income. Remember, savings generates income. How we know this? Because you can take this income and go associate with a C Corp. It just told you. Let's go back. So you say, you can't say you ignored it. So we're looking at this whole thing here. First question, critical thinking. I need you to think deeply and listen. What is your current tax bracket in 2022? Are you married or are you single? These questions, because when you enter, you need to know what you're going to be paying. 
You shouldn't be waiting to the end of the year. So, oh, I had no idea. An IRA is a deferment. You're not looking for deferments. What you're looking for is to reduce your tax bracket. What does that mean? It's association. It's your entry. What is your entry? You need to enter and then look. I need to move from a job, W-2, which is ordinary income. And then what opportunities does the IRS or they are ministering because they pass stimulus and they pass rules that the Congress, Senate and the House of Representatives passed that Congress want to be met in this area that they can say I can pay less federal taxes. This is only federal right now, guys. We're not talking about state. You got to look at your state tax. Now, we can automatically know that there's a state thing when it comes to state tax. So you don't look for the federal IRS for that. You look to the state for the state tax. Florida, Texas, Wyoming, Delaware, they have no state tax. So there's your answer. There's other states as well. But it's important to understand why people say, how come people moving to Texas? No state tax. Oh, they got no state tax, no federal tax either. How do we know they got no federal tax? Let's go back and let's look. Because if you operate as an ordinary income, you're going to automatically pay 10% at the entry. If you operate based on dividends, which are always associated with a C-Corp, how do we know it's associated with a C-Corp? Let's find out. We can ask the question. Does a LLC pay dividends according IRS? And the LLC profits are not subject to self-employment. Uh, and LLC profits are not subject to self-employment tax. However, if an LLC profits are distributed to us, LLC owners in the form of dividends, those dividends are taxed again at a 15% qualified dividend rate. Hmm, interesting. They said all dividends need to be reported to the IRS, a 15% qualified dividend rate. What does this refer to here? Uh oh, wait a minute. We got a problem, Houston. We seriously got a problem. You know what the problem that we have? They did say dividends are taxed again at a qualified dividend rate, but there is a problem here. Let's go with what that problem is. The problem is that this. We have, when we talk about, a, we talk about ordinary income, which I already wrote here, but we're gonna do ordinary versus qualified. And let's get another example. So you get to see something. Qualified dividends are taxed as capital gains rates rather than ordinary income tax rates, which are higher for most tax payers. Generally, dividends of common stock bought on U.S. exchange and held by investors for at least 60 days are qualified for a lower. There we go. We need to do some critical thinking because we just found out there's another information. If we were too quick and we just say, oh, I need to do an LLC, you're going to find something. So common stock, hmm, interesting. Let's take the next step. So we know that we have ordinary income. We get that information from this. Ordinary income comes from money earned from working, hourly wages, salary tips, commissions, interest from bonds, income earned from a business, that's right, income earned from a business. This is the reason that so many people get got to pay that self-employment tax who have LLCs, but you don't have that same thing, self-employment tax in a C-Corp. Now, you have short-term capital gains and you have also, um, if you hold it less than a year, and then, and then it's also called unqualified dividends. But here's the most important thing, because I love when Google puts out information, because we if we ask this question, what we call a disregarded, LLC. A disregarded LLC is a separate business entity that ignores for the purpose of tax. Taxation is given to tax. The LLCs are created at the state level as a separate entity, but for both states and federal taxes, the business is regarded and the owner is responsible for the taxes. Oh, what does that mean? A single member LLC does not elect to be treated as a corporation. The LLC is a disregarded entity and the LLC activity should be reflected as its owner's federal tax rate. 
Interesting. So if we go back, and even though it told you the difference between a qualified and this, that you could use it if you had an LLC, it wasn't true. How come? Because if you're a one member LLC, you're going to be taxed because you, you don't have a regular LLC. You have a disregarded LLC. Single member LLC, according to the, the IRS, look at this. A limited liability entity created by the state statute depends on election made by the LLC and the number of members. Oh, here's that problem, you guys. If you only one member LLC, you're going to run into a problem with the IRS. What does that mean? We back over here. So if you leave a job where you got, you got income that you're going to automatically make, to go start a business that you may not be successful with, which means you're taking a chance that it may not work. Understand that anybody who creates a legal entity, there's a chance it may not work. The problem that you have is that it's gonna be ordinary income. But on top of that, you gotta pay self-employment income. So the reason I'm showing this, cause all of this stuff that, especially that my kids say was, I was seeing on YouTube that they say that, or my friend told me his father said, and his lawyer said that we should be doing the LLC. They're all wrong. How come? They, if you want to become successful, you make your money at the entry. If you start a job, this is how much you're going to pay in taxes federally. It has nothing to do with state, but just your federal tax bracket. You make $10,275. You're going to pay 10%, $102.75 federally. Just clear cut, okay? If you go from here, we need to know this term, ordinary income. It's a type of income that comes from salaries, wages, bonds, some rent income, and some royalties are considered ordinary income, short-term capital gains. Now, they use the capital gains term, but let's look at the capital gains rate, tax rate for 2022. Here we go. Now we know we have a problem because it talks about before on the, on the uh, LLC that, you know, it's a qualified dividend and you can take up to 15%. Immediately jump to 15%, but actually it's called the disregarded LLC as one member. You're gonna be dealing with this tax bracket. Now here's the thing, you can't, you can't have W-2 income and have dividend income without the tax account mixing both together saying this is how much money you got because you got two income brackets sitting in there. So it's important to understand that when you say I want to reduce my tax bracket, it means you walk away from ordinary income and you enter what kind of income? Qualified dividend income. How come? Because if you mix the two, you're going to be stuck with the rate of ordinary income. You don't want to mix the two. All you want to do is move I am leaving ordinary income, which is fixed upon me from zero to 10,000, I'm gonna pay literally 10%. And I'm going to make from zero to 40,000, I'm gonna pay 0%. That's it, $41,675, zero. Second, capital gains rates, if it's coming from this, now keep this in mind, it's important you understand this, common stock. But this 0% is a little bit different as well. Let me explain because you need more context. This is the reason that I sit down and think because I know you're gonna have questions. And these questions may not always be answered in the first conversation. That's the case in point. The reason that I do these videos so I send to you so you can watch over and over and over again so that you can begin to layer. How come you need to layer? Because that's your rooting system. This is you, this is your rooting system. We're talking about non-labor income, which is, which is actually called qualified dividends. Here's the other thing. Here's another thing that we need to know. Open another window, move this to the right. Is this here? Okay, what is a return of capital? Return of capital refers to principal payments back to capital owners that exceed the growth of the business or investment. It should not be confused with the rate of return. Okay, another thing, what is the meaning of capital return? A payment or return received from an investment that is not considered taxable event and is not taxed as income. Capital is returned, for example, on retirement accounts or permanent life insurance policies. Regular investment accounts return 
gains first. Interesting. Guess which one does capital returns between an LLC and a C corporation? A distribution that excess of capital earnings and profits is generally viewed as a non-taxable return of capital to shareholders. In other words, it's, it is seen as merely a recovery or return of the shareholder's investment in the corporation. Wait a minute, did not say LLC did it. Didn't guys. So the next time one of my sons, you wanna come ask me that question, please understand, go back and watch this video. That's not gonna be mean or rude. I'm just telling you that you was informed by somebody who doesn't know. They don't know because they're hearing things and they're repeating things secondhand. That's right. A C corporation allows you to get the money back. And that is considered a capital return. It's not a taxable event. But in an LLC, any net profit that's left, you have to pay the taxes on plus 15.3. Because remember, it's called a disregarded LLC. So many people say, what do I use, a C corporation or LLC? Neither one of these are for one people. It's not for one person, I mean. So if you're doing a legal entity and it has one person in it, you're not using these entities correctly. I want to warn you, they're not for one person. Now, let's swing on down because I am at work. I'm supposed to be doing work. Uh, well, actually, doing work now, but I'm doing work for the family, and I want to make sure I do work for the company. Now, with this being said, just pay it. Let me go through it real quick. Starting point of understanding. This is your rooting system. What's your rooting system? Critical thinking. We now know we can look up our status. We know how much we're going to pay. If you want to make ordinary income, that is income that you're drawing into from an employer. If you receive income from a bond, you receive income from certain royalties and certain rent payments, that's ordinary income. What does that mean? Self-employment tax. It's not going to reflect on a 1099B. A 1099B is qualified which means it is subject to less taxes because the IRS, so basically Congress passed a rule. And the rule that they passed is they're looking for two things. Let me share what those two things are. This is what Congress is looking for. They're looking for legal entities that deal with two issues. jobs and housing, developing the GDP perspective. How does my concept fit into the job or in housing? So you want to you want to inherit or you want to go out here and start, or like my friends will say, well, what, what is the best entity for me to use? Listen, the question you ask is subjective, because first of all, you ask me a question for you, but you should be asking the question for the rules that was made, regardless of what I think. The IRS have stimulus. Every stimulus that's passed by the Senate and every stimulus that's passed by the House of Representatives is associated with a C Corp. Hard pause for a reason. For a C Corp, what is the goal of the company you're trying to start? Is it going to create jobs? Is it going to build housing? No, no. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to start my own business because I want to sell T-shirts. Great. How would that help jobs and help housing? No, no, it's just for me because I don't want to work for nobody. Rule number one, the rules for stimulus by the House and by the Senate was not about you. It used to be a saying, not ask what your country do for you, but what you can do for your country. John, J.F. Kennedy said that. Well, here's my question. If you want to get the benefit of qualified, you would not ask that question. You would say, okay. But notice what else. When we look at the rooting system, again, the concept of deep thinking, you see developing the GDP perspective, founders, officers, and lower managers, what skill I need to learn or add to my team, board of directors, stockholders, equity, non-equity, policy, capital allocations. One of the reasons why nine out of 10 business fail is because nine out of 10 business don't go build a team. They build an individual construct. What is an individual construct? It is me, myself, and I, ego trinity. I want to go out here. Recently, I was, um, um, before I decided to write this, I actually got the idea to write this because I was um, going through 
of some of our content. And I ran into a video, and you know, I, at, at the end it comes, and this guy says, I got five different income streams. Basically what he said is I have, I'm self-employed, I get ordinary income, and then I have another way I get ordinary income. Then I have another way I get ordinary income. Then I have another way I get ordinary income. He didn't change from ordinary to qualified. That's a problem. Now, you may say, what does it got to do anything? Because you're starting a business and you can, in that basic step, or you're receiving inheritance, do you think that I'm going to leave you with an LLC? No, I'll never leave you with it. You'll never inherit an LLC from me. You never inherit that. So what, what would make sense if I'm going to be leaving wealth to my lovely children? Do you think I'm going to leave you with a business that doesn't properly operate according to the policies that are written by the United States Congress? I mean, the, the president of the United States does not have a cabinet of successful businessmen that own LLCs. They own C-Corps. That should be a clue. Well, it is a, it's a, it's a, it's a 536 and I got a meeting to go to. I would love to pick up on this more. Watch this again. Understand what I just said. And until next time, watch the other videos. Hopefully this is building rooting system in your mind for critical thinking so that you, this will all make sense. I know you're not gonna learn this overnight, but at least you have a father that cares and a friend that cares for my friends and then for my cousins. Okay. I've held this long enough, I'm now sharing it. I teach my kids first and you can learn why I'm teaching now. So everybody's learning at the same time. Till next time, have a wonderful day and I look forward to chatting with you soon. Bye.